Brendan, Cody, congratulations. You guys are in the third and final round of this competition. Now, when you came here, we asked you to make smatchets to very exacting specifications. Well, that's led us up to our next and final challenge, where you'll have to forge this parameter-heavy blade from history. The Spanish Conquistador sword. Good luck. We'll see you in four days. Good luck, man. So it's day one. We are in Atascadero, California at my home forge, and I'm about to make a Spanish Conquistador sword from 80 CRV2. And so it begins. No power hammer, no press. I am just going to be doing a lot of hammering today. It's got a lot of parameters on it. It's got a knuckle guard, medallion pommel. There's a lot of places that I could mess up. So at this point, the end of day one, I moved a lot of metal, and I did it without a power hammer. My hand <laughs> doesn't really feel very good, <laughs> but it's all good. It's the start of day three. Today is going to be all about the guard. With all these pieces on this guard, the balance and the weight of this is going to be an issue. Most of it's just going to be seeing what feels right. I have to start bending up the quillions and the knuckle bow. At first, it was pretty confusing, trying to figure out which direction the swoops of the quillions were supposed to go. As I broke it down, it became clear in my head, starting to look like something. I have a big chunk of Damascus left over from the blade that I plan on using for the pommel, and this will balance out the weight of the sword. I'm really happy with the way everything came out, so tomorrow will just be a little bit of cleaning, fine-tuning, and shaping. Day three, I have to finish this blade. I got to get it heat treated. I got to get as much of that done today as possible. No, I got to get all of that done today. As I'm forging this thing out, I'm just about done. I'm straightening it, and I notice that it's not quite getting as hot. The propane's running out. It's just slowly dropping. It's not very easy to go fill this tank. At this point, I am running out of time, so I'm not going to quench today because I won't be able to get the blade hot enough. So I'm going to just wait it out until I have the propane, get the even heat that I need, because there's zero room for error. It's the start of day four. I have to get everything cleaned up. I got to get the handle shaped. I will bed it with epoxy. I'm going to wax the tang and then pour it into the handle, and that will set up. I think I can afford to do a little texturing. It'll add a little bit of grip. Everything slides on just as I want them to. This thing will keel. So it's day four, last day. I was able to get some new propane in the tank. I have a big list of stuff to do today. So I'm quenching before I do anything else. Yeah, it came out great. Now, I have to start thinking about all the other components of this build. Starting out with this guard, I'm actually welding it to the blade because I won't have to worry about it slipping off. I think it'll be fine. I'm checking the specs, and it says disc-shaped pommel. It doesn't say that it has to be steel, so I think that my best bet is just making one out of wood. <sighs> it's over. I'm tired. I'm stoked that I think I hit every parameter and I feel extremely excited to see this thing in action. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Your weapons are lovely, but are they deadly? Well, to find out, I will take your weapon and deliver some slashes and thrusts on this beautiful Spanish goat. Cody, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right, Cody, I think there's a little bit of a problem here. I can't get my eyes past the beauty of the Damascus that you have right here. This is a beautiful piece. It cuts deeply, it thrusts nicely even when hitting bone, and it is a pleasure to wield. Sure, the beautiful sword that you have here, it will keel. Yeah. All right, Ben, your turn, sir. Time to have fun? Yeah. Let's do this.
right, Brandon. Let's talk about your sword here. Your blade did take a little bend here that wasn't there earlier. The handle kind of kicks up right now. Now, your edge is very sharp right here. The point is sharp enough to thrust all the way. Using this edge delivers that kind of cut. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Bladesmiths, welcome to the perfect strength test for your swords, our flex test. Now, a properly heat treated blade will bend and come back to true. If it's not properly heat treated, it could bend, stay that way, or just break altogether. Cody, are you ready to go? Let's do it. Cody, really nice job. Great balance, beautiful sword, and it hasn't moved at all. It's dead straight. Heat treating Damascus on a knife can be tricky enough sometimes. Doing it on a sword like this and keeping that heat treat dead on, really nice job. Thank you. All right, Brandon, you saw what it's like. How you feeling? A little nervous. Good job, Brendan. Now you can see when it was locked in the vise, the guard was kicked off to the side. So you've got a twist in your blade up at the tip. You had a little bit of a warp in the tip before. It's a little bit further now, but not extreme. Good choice on the steels. A Little bit of a bend, but very good job. Thanks. All right, bladesmiths. Now it's time to find out how sharp your weapons are. This is the sharpness test, the vine slice. Now, conquistador, or conquer in English, doesn't just have to conquer their enemies, but the terrain that they find themselves holding the weapon. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take your swords and try to cut through these vines. Now, unlike the strength, this is all about how well the edge of your blade cuts through these vines. Cody, up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Cody, we know from the keel test, the first four inches are sharp, but now for the sharpness test, the rest of the blade is very sharp, like hot knife through butter. It'll cut. All right, Brendan, your turn. You ready, sir? Oh, yeah. All right, Brendan, let's talk about your edge here. The first four inches here are very sharp. It's razor edge right there. Then it doesn't hold an edge on any of these parts right here. And then it picks up a sharp edge in this area here. On that one vine that didn't cut, there is a laceration, but not deep enough. But on the areas that are sharp, it cuts right through. So it will cut. All right, Bladesmiths, the Forge and Fire champion is Cody, congratulations. You're the new Forged and Fire champion. Good job, brother. Brendan, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Come on forward, my friend. Good job, man. This was a very difficult challenge. Having such a complex final build to make, it was pretty crazy, but it was a great time. Cody, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, my friend. I just won Forge and Fire. This is awesome. This is the most money I've ever had in one check, that's for sure. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with this money. I'm going to spend some of it on my shop, and I'm going to spend some of it on my family.